I make it no secret that I love LaTeX. In fact, I even made a blog post all the way down here why I only use LaTeX for documents now. Uh, if you want to learn more about LaTeX, plenty of great useful videos out there or plenty of articles you can read or tutorials you can follow. I'm not going to get into how to use LaTeX today, but what I would like to share is how I use LaTeX to run my blog. Now, this isn't something I've really ever seen before. I've seen it done a couple times before, but all of the methods, they used a lot of these huge frameworks or you need to have an entire like new platform installed. One was in Haskell, which required like a gigabyte of dependencies. And I said no to all of that. I wanted my blog to be minimal. Now, if you know anything about LaTeX, you'll know that LaTeX, it's not a very minimalist system. There was a way I found around it. If you want to read more about how I actually got to setting it up, you can come and read this. You can see the link right up here. And you can see that my blog is all written nice and neat. And this is all done in LaTeX. You can see on my latest posts that I can insert images. I can have numbered lists, italics, and all that. And all these different formatting options. All this is possible with LaTeX and basically my custom quote-unquote compiler. Which it mostly is sort of a wrapper for Pandoc. But we're going to get into that. So what I'd like to show you is the system that I have set up. So I'm going to go to the repository real quick. It is at github.com slash swindlesmitcoop slash blogtech. Now I have this script here, so I can just type in blogtech. It'll open this for me. All right, I didn't know that we had to enable 2FA soon. I will do that tonight, probably. Anyways, so you can see that I have this static blog generator here. Only one dependency, and then the dependencies that Pandoc relies on, obviously has whole tutorial written here, which I'm going to kind of do a tutorial today for you guys as well. And then I have some information about what's supported, including math, which I thought was pretty cool. But so this is the repository. Uh, if you want to just, it is probably going to be like a 10 minute video or something. I'm not sure if you don't want to watch all this, then you can just go over here, read about it and set it up on your machine. However, I'm going to do a video because I know some people like that. And also I like making videos. So here we go. Uh, I'm gonna before that though. I'm gonna put on some music. Most of my videos they seem kind of uh, empty with no music, so I like to put on a little little something. Uh, let me turn down the volume on my machine real quick. There we go. And I'll put that away. There we go. All right. So I'm SSH'd into my server right now, and I have this actually set up in a Docker container. Uh, everything that I do on my server is through Docker. I'd never run Docker on my actual desktop, don't worry. Uh, I think that's kind of weird. But on a server, it makes sense, you know, because people could attack, and if people get into something, then really they're just running around inside the sandbox that I generated based off of an, an image, and all the files are backed up that are actually important. So it really doesn't matter but if they try and actually get into my image, if they delete everything or try and nuke it. Basically, Docker is smart to use on a server. I don't find a purpose on desktop, to be honest. So I run it inside of Docker slash blog tech. That's the official pronunciation for you guys out there. And um, I'm, well, ignore the Kino stuff. I'm working on a movie review setup, uh, which is also going to use the blog tech uh, quote unquote engine. I don't really know what to call this. It's not written in like an actual language. So I'm afraid to call it like a compiler or an engine or anything like that. So I kind of just call it a generator, but it's, it uses the same system basically. So I'm going to show you what the blog looks like from an HTML perspective. So this looks fairly simple. And when I open up the page source, it's kind of just a lot of, a lot of, well, garbage is not well formatted at all. Um, whenever I write my own HTML, if I just get rid of this, you can see I, I try to keep it nice and neat, uh, except for all this sets for the web ring, but I try and keep everything pretty nice. All of this, however, is automatically generated by Pandoc because I don't like writing HTML. You know what I wrote instead? Let's go into blog-tech and I'm just going to cat out bottledwater.tech. And you can see, how about I, well, you know, I won't cat it out. I'll just open in Vim real quick. There we go. And you can see that I wrote this entire thing actually in LaTeX, which has very nice formatting. So this is very easy to change and 
all, obviously LaTeX pretty much follows basic standards and it's always going to follow the same standards no matter what. As opposed to HTML where it's you know, the HTML5 and the center tag gets deprecated and nobody wants to deal with all that. But LaTeX, LaTeX is forever and LaTeX is very simple. Like I said in my one blog post, if I want line breaks, I don't have to type uh, bracket br closing bracket bracket br closing bracket every single time I want to have a line break like this I just make the line break so this is already an infinitely easier method of doing things and I just like LaTeX more and I remember all the commands and whatnot in LaTeX as opposed to all the tags in HTML really the only thing that you need to do on the HTML side is CSS but I already had a lot of the CSS set up from when I was manually writing the HTML so I didn't really need to do a lot of tweaking besides just changing it to however Pandoc was generating these HTML files. Anyways, let's get out of here. So all you have to do is write a couple LaTeX files. The only problem is that this doesn't work if you only have one post. I think you need two just because of how the, like, the script works and appending things to the index. Which, by the way, let me go back to here real quick. You can see that the blog does indeed have an index and all of this is auto generated except for this which all of this you define by yourself if you don't want it there you don't have to have it and then it creates a div which is kind of nice in my opinion maybe i should close the div i'll probably add that to the script later but it creates a div that way you can format this specifically which i do and let me remove view source so you can see what this actually looks like and this creates the blog index all of these dates are automatically added based off of the tech file date and all the titles are grabbed from here and the author uh, because the author tag is kind of unique in that it goes with the title what i like to do is have a little uh sort of subtitle with all of my articles and then i have the date but all my older articles uh i just have my name basically anyways so uh, we're going to go into how to actually use this. So like I said, write up a couple LaTeX documents. If you don't know how to do that, plenty of tutorials on YouTube. I'm not going to get into that today. And then what I have set up actually is, uh, the, like I said, a Docker container. So I just run a make file that runs Docker Compose um, in the blog tech directory. So let me go into there. Whoops. And so we have the make file here, the actual make file. It runs Docker Compose. And in the Docker Compose, you can see that it runs this compile.sh. So what is compile.sh? Well, let's check it out. And this is basically where the meat of it all happens. So you, you set some variables that you want. Uh, you set where your source files are going to be at. You can set the output files where those are going to be at. You set the CSS and this isn't a directory or location on your computer. This is on your server whenever it gets rendered in the browser. So as you can see, it says slash CSS slash blog CSS and it's going to show up with all of my CSS. You don't want it to be something like slash user slash share slash CSS because that's not how it's set up whenever the actual user is rendering it. And then you want your blog URL for the RSS feed, which I forgot to actually mention. Um, I have an RSS feed and all of this is automatically generated by the script. And all of that HTML gets dumped in here. Thankfully, it actually looks good on RSS readers. I was scared it wouldn't because it's kind of messy, but it all works out and it depends the date, it adds the URL. Um, I'm not sure if images show up, no idea. Maybe I'll fix it if it doesn't, but this seems to work pretty well. I've looked at it in Newsboat and all the links work fine and everything seems to kind of just work. Now I put a lot of work into setting this up obviously but now that I have it set up I haven't really had it fail on me that much. So all this does is it takes all the tech files, gets their dates, titles, authors, and then makes the index. And then while using all that information, it also makes the RSS feed. And it goes through, it uses pandoc, constructs the RSS feed. This is where the actual RSS part comes in. Uh, but what I'm going to show you, because the actual script isn't that important, what I'm going to show you now is what you need besides your LaTeX files. So like I said, you're going to need your uh, LaTeX files, which I have in dot dot slash blog dash tech, and those get compiled to their HTML counterparts. However, there are a couple extra things that you're going to need. 
So if we go into blog-tech, we can see that there are a couple HTML and XML files. So you can see header.html and header.xml. Header.html, like I showed you before, it has the things at the, that go at the top of this index that I showed you, this page index. So this content right here, identically identical to here. And that's probably why the I never closed the post div because it's part of the header. But um, it doesn't really matter if you don't close it because it's just gonna interpret everything from here onwards as the div. And if there's nothing below it, then it doesn't really matter. And in my CSS, I actually refer to the div to do some formatting on it, which is why I actually have the div. And same thing with header.xml. You can see that this is the top of the RSS feed over here. And it ends at content, and then everything that is generated by the script gets put after that. You can see the content tag right here. So that's all you really need to set up. Uh, you can use my examples. I have them on the repository. And then all you have to do from there is run compile and then make sure that the HTML files themselves are accessible to the web. And that's it. Then you have your blog. So there's a little bit of customization you can do, like I showed you in the script, not a lot. Most of it is going to be standard HTML customization through CSS. You can't change the HTML itself as far as I know, and I couldn't figure out how to insert raw HTML tags in. Um, but most of the things I wanted to do, I was able to actually do with LaTeX and CSS. There's a couple hacks that are required, but I'm sure you'll figure them out. Anyways, thanks for watching. Um, I've wanted to make this video since May, so what is that now? About three months ago, uh, so that's about a quarter of the year. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I know I don't post a lot. I'm trying. Uh, I have a lot of videos. I got a new mic in case it sounds better. Not sure. Um, but I got a new mic. I have a lot of vid video ideas. I just need to get them out. Uh, I'm very busy going to college soon, like I said a couple of videos ago. So I might, I might have more time. I might have less time. Who knows? Uh, I might be more focused. That's that's more of the thing. It's like I'll have plenty of time and I just don't feel like making a YouTube video and then I don't. And I'm like, oh, man, why don't I make YouTube videos? Regardless, uh, that's it for the video. Uh, I hope there's nothing that I missed. If there is, I'll put it in the description or the comments. But uh, I'll leave the link to the repository in the description, leave a link to my blog as well. And I'm pretty sure the repository itself actually does have some example files. Um, yeah, so example.tech. And that should give you a pretty good indicator as to what your post should look like. Now, all this extra fancy formatting and stuff, you're going to have to do that yourself, obviously. But if you're running your own website, you probably know how to do that anyways. So if you want to switch over to this, it's not too hard. If you need any issue, or if you need any help, you can submit an issue on the Git GitHub repo. Um, kind of stuttering, I don't know why. Uh, you can email me if you want to. Message me on Matrix. I have a contact page, actually. Um... So you can, uh, I don't really use IRC that much, but I am always online. So if you do want to message me, I am on these IRC's um, networks. Uh, I don't really chat in the channels, but if you want to message me directly, feel free. Uh, like I said, matrix and email. So that's enough for the video. Thanks for watching. And this video actually turned out longer than I expected. I thought it was going to be like eight or nine minutes, but it turned out to be about 14 before editing. So thanks for watching.